Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today we're gonna to get started on a project on the 1985 Chevy K10 square body pickup truck that we pretty much completely redid on the channel sometime back. And I've got a modification to this thing to bring it up a little closer to the 2023 standards. This thing is almost perfect in every way, in my opinion, both inside and out. But there is one thing about it that bothers me every single time I get in it, and I'm hoping that this upgrade will take care of that issue. So let me show you what I got, because some of you may want to do what I'm about to do to this truck to your elderly vehicle. So the upgrade that we're going to be adding to the old Chevy pickup truck is a complete Holley throttle body fuel injection system from the tank all the way up to the throttle body. We're even going to have time and control. I purchased this kit maybe eight months ago and it's just now, at least it's just now completely coming in. So I'm excited about this. Let me show you in greater detail some of these things because the quality of this, at least from you know just looking at it, is very nice. So before we get started installing this kit, I want to show you some of these parts in a little, little better detail. I also want to explain why I'm doing this modification, why I think that it is a good one. So here's a look at the throttle body. Really nicely made. I got the gold, by the way, because my truck's got gold on it. This has four fuel injectors in it. It gets its controls from the brain box that's in here. And it, through a bunch of sensors, monitors the current conditions and changes the air fuel ratio based on uh, the current conditions where my carburetor that's on the truck currently, it's tuned for the day that I tuned it and that's it. Any drastic swings in weather, high or low, it's gonna be suboptimal. Over time, this should be more efficient because it makes changes in real time than a carburetor. Plus this adds a, tune, a ton of tunability from the driver's seat through a little handheld or you can, you know, go in depth more with laptop and the, and the program uh, for this thing. That's what makes this nice. A lot of people go into it thinking they're gonna make a ton more horsepower. And if you're way out of tune before you put one of these on, then maybe you will make some more horsepower. But if you've got a good tune in your carburetor, on the day that you compare fuel mileage, it's probably gonna be about the same. But it's about that average over time. You know, this will be closer to optimum more of the time than the carburetor and hopefully gain me a little fuel miles per gallon. Plus, I can do all of the tuning from the seat, which is super nice. We got our MSD box, billet dual sink distributor, We've got the MSD coil, we've got the uh, Terminator Max, uh, X Max uh, ECU, and then we've got our fuel tank, which I'll show you that in just a second. It's, it's super nice. So there's a look at the fuel tank. Looks like it's silver uh, powder coated. Not for sure. It's got uh, screw in bungs, and we got a uh, we got a fuel pump. We got our sending unit. We've got Cora here. We've got new straps. Um, we got our return. This is a pretty nice tank, and it is designed to fit directly onto that truck, and should be very nice. So I also failed to mention that I should be able to reach through the window, turn the key, and this should fire right up. Currently, I got to pat the gas a few times, sit in the seat, start it up, try to keep it running. It runs good, but it runs like any other small block 350 with a big cam in it that's carbureted. Chances are they've got to be babysitted. And if we get our tune correct, this should start just like any modern vehicle. Reach through, turn the key, spin on your heels, go back inside, have some coffee while your vehicle warms up, which is nice. So we have to assemble this fuel tank. We have to kind of custom make our fuel pump unit and our fuel sending unit. This is what tells us whether we're gonna be walking soon or we can just keep on driving past the gas station. Operates the fuel gauge. That's a little float. You can see this kind of slip joint there to where we can lengthen it if we need to. We have to tailor it to the depth of the tank. That's what it's all about. Make our little fuel pickup sock set on the bottom so we get all of the fuel out. You get it, it's not that complicated. They give you instructions here. So you can cut your tubes to the right length and set the arm to the, to the right length. Not all that complicated, actually.
instructions. It says to tighten down the fuel sending unit, the uh, fuel pump, and the spout to six inch pounds. So small mechanical beam torque wrench, six inch pounds is very, very little actually. So it also said in the instructions to use like the Indian head shellac. I used this Permatex number two. It's just a non-hardening fuel and oil resistant sealant to help, help these cork gaskets maybe seal a little better. I said it was optional. But since I had it, I figured I'd use it. This sometimes goes bad. There we go. You grab that other jug, take the top off of it. like a chili dog. That's a real chili dog. That's, that's cool. <laughs> Little Cora, the chili dog. Hello, girl. Mm. So like, you can pet me while you do this. Uh, I've took all but two out, so there's that one, mm -hmm. and then there's one right here. Oh, let me show you where. Get this light to where. One here. See that one? Yeah. So out in front of the shop, I installed, me and my buddy Al actually did it, a new light. See that? That is a 300 watt LED light, one that you'd see in a parking lot or something. Super bright. It's crazy. It's so bright. And once it gets dark, I'll show you just how, uh, how bright it actually is. So if I wanted to do work out here in the summertime, now I've got the light to do it. So check out how bright that is. It's daylight out here. Really does a great job of highlighting all my junk. So installing one of these kits is really not all that difficult. The thing is that there is a lot to do when you're doing a full retrofit, like what I'm doing, which involves the tank, like the distributor, you've seen all the stuff. Also got to install a fuel pressure regulator because this truck never had anything like that from the factory. So because I'm going with an in-tank 
fuel pump, high pressure fuel pump, that needs to be of a certain output, PSI, I have to have a fuel pressure regulator. And I'm mounting it on a cross support, chassis cross support, that is uh, pretty close to the tank, and that way I can limit the amount of uh, fuel line that I have to run. It just makes things easier. But if I need to adjust the fuel pressure, that has to be done from under the truck. But it's kind of a one-time gig, so that's what I'm doing. Mounting the fuel pressure regulator. So in order for this kit to work like it should, we have to install a uh, temperature sensor, coolant temperature sensor, oil pressure sending unit, uh, an oxygen sensor in the exhaust. There's several things because it needs that information to calculate what it needs to do in order to make the engine run as, optim as optimally as possible or as good or as it can run. So this is not a kit that you install in 15 minutes. I didn't see anything on the instructions that looked all that bad, to be honest. So let's take a second and talk about distributors because that's where I'm at uh, at this moment. We're going from the old school HEI GM distributor, which is awesome by the way, reliable, workhorse, made timing far more dependable, a lot less maintenance than the old point system. They're, they're very adjustable. Problem is that they're 100% mechanical. If you want to change the timing curves in this guy, you got to change the weights, the centrifugal weights. If you want to change the timing, you got to reach under the hood, grab the distributor, and give it a twist. You know how that works. Also, if we want to change our vacuum advance, we got to go in there with a little screwdriver, make some changes, hope in a way that it works. If you want to adjust these to a specific setup, you almost have to have one of those rigs that you put these on that monitors everything, and you can play with the weights to get it exactly where you want it. Good, but mechanical. The distributor that we're going to, MSD or Holly, a dual sync distributor, it is pretty much controlled by the little handheld unit or laptop. I can adjust my timing curves sitting in the truck. I can monitor the way that it's running, all of that stuff, change it on the fly without even opening the hood. So my, as far as advanced, far more advanced distributor than the old HEI, um, 
Another thing that kind of gets me worried is that I'm not exactly for sure if the gear that came on this distributor was compatible with my camshaft because I, if you remember correctly, I ran into, if you watch the videos when I was building this truck, I ran into an issue where I was getting accelerated wear on the camshaft gear that was in this when I did my first oil change, a little bit of sparkly in there, and it came from the old gear that I had on this. Originally thought I put a melanized gear on it, but it, I didn't. I bought the cheapest one that I could find that said melanized, and come to find out, uh, it wasn't. It was just a soft steel gear. So I put a melanized gear on here, and since I did that, they've been playing together, the camshaft gear and the distributor gear, they've been playing really nice together. Zero wear on either one that I can tell, so I'm really happy with that. Well, I started put this in I'm like well I better check and make sure that the gear is compatible with my camshaft so I dug into the manual which is highly recommended uh, to read if you're going to do an install like this because you can run into trouble that you may not even be aware of unless you read the manual it comes with a hardened steel gear that should be compatible what it says should be compatible with most roller camshafts which is what I have I know this is long-winded but let's hear me out here because this is important information I don't like the should be, so what I did is I dug into my stock. Luckily, I had a Howard's Cam melanized half-inch board or GM distributor gear. So I took the original one that was on here off, swapped it out for a Howard's Cam gear that I know is recommended for my camshaft because it is made by the same people who made my camshaft. So there we go. That's the changing of the distributors, the reason why, some of the problems that uh, you know you can run into, compatibilities with camshafts and stuff like that. So there you go. Let's put some goop on this gear, drop this distributor in, and uh, we're one step closer. So this throttle body will support up to from 200 up to 600 horsepower so it's well within the range of the power that i've got on my truck it looks amazing in my opinion this is the terminator x max stealth stealth being looks like old school holly double pumper really doesn't look like a fuel injected throttle body but that's what it is what would be the fuel bowls if this was a double pumper are actually actually fuel rails you can see it's got four fuel injectors there i'll get you a little closer look in just a second before we put this on Four barrel, throttle positioning sensor, comes set up to con decorate directly connect some 6AN fittings. I'll show you those as well in case you've never been exposed to those. It does not come with all of the fuel lines and fittings. You have to get that individually. Um, let me get you a little better shot. We'll talk about some of those things in case you want to do this yourself. You'll have a little, little better information about what you may need um, other than just the kit itself. So I got the gold, in case you didn't see that this was gold. Holly's got some super nice casting work. Uh, they've been casting aluminum carburetors forever, so I'm not surprised to find that the casting work on this looks really, really nice. So does the anodizing job. It looks good. You can get a gold, black, uh, standard anodized aluminum, I think silver, or I think you can get polished as well. Uh, uh, you know, if you if you want whatever, sit, float your boat. I got gold because my truck's got gold in it. it comes set up for six AN fittings. At least this up to six hundred and fifty horsepower model does. So it comes with this fitting here, and you have to buy all of the rest of the fittings to hook up to your system. That's that's on you and not in the kit. I'll show you how one of them works. Uh, they're super nice. You can six, eight, or ten AN, and they're pretty affordable fittings as well. I'm not going to break the bank to to get your fuel system hooked up. I'll show you the line that I'm using. Right, we'll install this pressure transducer in the fuel line because it has to know fuel pressure in order for it to all work uh, correctly. So I've got a transducer in my fuel line and I've got a transducer in uh, just a pressure sending unit in my oil pressure, which is an optional for this setup. I want to be able to log that data and know, be able to monitor it. So I decided to tie in a uh, transducer into it as well. But anyway, let's get this installed, get some of these tightened up. I'll show you one of these fittings, then we'll plop this on the motor, and uh, should be one step closer to being done. So here's the fuel line that I'm using. It is stainless steel braided line. 
it's covered with a like a nylon. Here's a 6AN fitting. It's a two-piece. So this screws off, slides onto your fuel line. Push it all the way up, or it butts up, like that. And then when this screws in, it pushes and flares inside of the tubing and just smashes it against the ID and the OD of the tubing against the fitting and pretty much creates a creates a leak-free seal. And that's pretty much it. Connected. Won't pull out because it's threaded into the, the center barb is threaded. It threads itself into the hose and just makes a pretty solid fitting. <laughs> so here's the part that I dislike the most and I can probably say that for the majority of you guys and that would be all of the wiring that the actual hookup the spaghettis you know that you got to hook up to make all of this stuff work now they do a pretty good job in the manual and I've read every page of this manual, even the stuff that doesn't apply to me, to try to get the best understanding of this kit that I can. Not be an electrician, you know, this stuff can be intimidating, but the good thing about it is they label each plug, show you where everything goes, they explain in detail what each one's for. And they also give you a pretty good diagram there, telling you, you know, just showing you where everything hooks up, where at on the harness these connections are, what they're for, that's pretty good. So this is going to take a little while to get this hooked up, but it's nicely loomed. It's well labeled. Shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Progress is being made. Fuel tank is completely installed minus the 12 volt power for the fuel pump. 
Got to figure where that, out where that comes from. Got the fuel lines ran at least to the fuel filter. Got them ran through my pressure regulator. Got my return line from the regulator ran. Got my fuel tank vent ran. Everything zip tied up and out of the way. Looks pretty nice. I'm happy with that. I just got to finish one item at a time and then move to the next. That's the way I like to do it. Get all the hardware installed, and I've got the, all of that done minus the coil, and then move on to the wiring. That way stuff is in the place that it's gonna be, and I can just bite the bullet, right? Do all of the wire hiding and stuff all at one time. That way you don't have to go back and mess with it. Cora was a huge help, by the way, installing that uh, fuel tank, moral support. Um, when it comes to wrenches and stuff, she can't hand me anything because she doesn't have hands, but if she did, she would. My son was going to help me, but uh, he's got school, a full-time job, and a girlfriend, and he's 16 years old. So dad's fuel tank falls low on the list of things that uh, are of priority to him, and I don't blame him. So got it installed, and I've done a bunch of these. I've Almost every truck I've ever owned like this, I've put the fuel tank in by myself. So nothing strange. As long as they're not full of fuel, they're not hard to, they're not hard to get in. A little bit of circus work, but uh, it can be done. So I'm running a power wire up the frame rail from the 12 volt pump because this truck never had a in tank fuel pump, so there's no wire there. I have to run it from the fuel pump up the frame rail to this green wire. Says the manual and that will power my fuel pump and then that part of the system will be done. I want to flush all of the lines before I hook it up to the throttle body. I want to put my line in a bucket, run the fuel pump, get any debris or anything out of those lines before I dump it directly into the injectors of uh, this thing. So that's got to be done and uh, then it'll be on to the ignition wiring which I kind of dread to be honest. Uh, there's quite a bit of wires there but the manual gives really good you know, diagrams of how they should be wired up, and it's gonna vary depending on your system. Maybe you got a Ford, maybe you wanna keep your HEI distributor. You're right, I'm running the, I'm running the dual sync distributor in the Series 6 uh, MSD box. You may not wanna run that, and you don't have to, but luckily, this covers about every scenario, every popular scenario that you're gonna run into, so. Pretty neat, pretty neat. I still gotta install my bung for my O2 sensor as well. Forgot about that. But for now, fuel line, or not fuel line, power to the fuel pump, focus on that. So anywhere that I'm running power, if it doesn't have a fuse link in it, I'm putting a fuse link in it. It's pretty easy to do. I just purchased these cheap little uh, fuse links. Actually, a viewer sent me a pack of these some time back. That, get them off Amazon. You just crimp them in line. You got to have the, the wire crimpers to actually crimp the terminals, but it's so worth it. In the past, I have ran wire and burn up harnesses and all that stuff. And for the few little minutes that it takes to put in a fuse link, it's worth it. There we go. Fused link between the harness and the fuel pump. So let's talk about a few of the potential downfalls to a system like this, and there are a few. One is they are far more complicated than the old carburetor. There's a lot that goes on in a carburetor, but these are far more complicated. Far more wires, if you're not comfortable with that kind of stuff, you know. Maybe you need to find somebody to install a system like this for you, or at least help you. Another thing is that your engine needs to be in good condition, because if it's not, you're going to battle. If you don't have a good exhaust system that's sealed up tight, you're going you're gonna to get all kinds of issues, and you're going to blame it on the system, when really it's the condition of your engine that is causing the issues. Big vacuum leaks, stuff like that, these are far more sensitive to than the old carburetor is. In fact, the carburetor doesn't care if you got exhaust at all. But this does, because it takes data from that via the O2 sensor, plugs it into the brain, and tells this thing what to do. And if that system and that information is uh, contaminated, then you're gonna have problems, and it's not gonna be a very pleasurable experience trying to diagnose what's going on. So 
My advice is make sure that the heart, how do they do that? Like that, heart of your unit, the engine, exhaust, fuel system, all is in good shape before you try to do a conversion like this. Or else, like I said, you're gonna battle and uh, you're gonna blame it on lots of things when it could be just the condition of your engine causing your problems. So get the heart of your rig in line before you do something like this. So let me show you what I believe I'm gonna do as far as mounting the brains of the system or the ECU. Now you can mount these under the hood in the engine bay. They, I believe they are considered uh, splash resistant. I don't know about watertight, but you know what I mean. I wanna keep it dry and I wanna be able to access these LEDs. So I've decided that the glove box looks like a good place to mount this. I can still access those LEDs, indicator lights. I'll just have to drill a few holes in the bottom. It'll keep my wires up and under the dash and it'll be a nice clean install. So that's what I'm gonna do. So mount this back here. So check that install out. I'm actually pretty happy with that. There's our ECU mounted in there. So when we open the glove box, hopefully we'll be able to see the LEDs. We still got the majority of the use of our glove box and see how I ran my wires out. Got the main power, the manifold vacuum, and then our two main harness plugs. There's the fusible link for the power for the ECU. And we got uh, you know, the rest of the stuff on there. And that, that'll fold up under there. We'll get that put up on top of the box in there and should work good. So I'm gonna install this, try it out, and then that's probably about as far as I'm gonna be able to get this week. So there we go, ECU installed. I just gotta pull these wires uh, up under there. Plenty of room to hide those. I just gotta find a place to zip tie them. So easily accessible, the LEDs. Still got full use of the glove box. Plus it's mounted to plastic, so it, the vibrations and stuff, if that's an issue, uh, you know, may make it last longer, I don't know. But I think it looks good. Looks like a nice clean installation to me. And as soon as we get our wires tucked up, it will be done, at least that part anyway. So that is as far as I'm gonna get on this install in this video. Every bit of a two-day job if you haven't installed one of these uh, before and you're just starting from scratch and doing the entire kit. It is a pretty big undertaking, actually, to get one of these uh, installed properly. So still got a lot to do, probably three quarters of the way done on the install, but uh, we're not gonna get it done. Not in this video, I'm not Superman. So we'll have to revisit this. Figured we would work on the truck a little bit because we hadn't visited it in, in a while. And I know a lot of people enjoyed the build on this. So 
I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out this summer and uh, enjoying it. Maybe going to uh, LS Fest this year, hoping to take this thing, maybe go to the Holly booth, visit with some of the other creators that go to those events. Uh, thinking that those road trips and stuff, Elizabeth I know would enjoy them, and I'm sure that I would as well. So we'll probably do some of that, uh, that this summer. So may invite some of you guys along if you want to come down and visit. I think that would be fun. Visit the Holly booth and uh, talk to the guys that uh, you know I've talked to on the phone and stuff. So can't wait to get this done. I've got some exciting stuff coming up in the future. Got a pretty interesting machining job coming up and a project that I know a lot of you guys will like uh, that we're gonna get back on as soon as the weather straightens up. So. That's it for this week anyway. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So that is it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.